people, enough. We're going to cut this BS down one by one. These guys are so great with Gish Gallup, and they come with a barrage of BS, half li- half truths and lies. You know what I'm saying? So that's bad because the best they can have is a half truth. Okay. Uh, you will see uh, uh, how Chris Harris is deceiving the world by telling us that the eponymous ancestor is or what it is. Okay, it is what it is, and what Chris says it is, it is not. Let's check it out. All right, he goes into what we call eponymous ancestry. Right? Eponymous ancestry is um, a fake genealogy. That's all it is. That's all eponymous ancestry is. Okay. He said eponymous ancestry is a fake de- genealogy. That's all in totality that it is. Let's see if Chris Harris telling the truth or not. This is eponym from. Uh, Britannica.com, it says, eponym, one for whom or which something is or is believed to be named, one for which or whom something is believed to be named. Basically, uh, something, excuse me, it is some uh, eponym is someone which something is named after, basically. So Chris Harris is saying that basically an eponymous ancestor is basic meaning in totality is fake genealogy. When you're reading a definition and you know how to find the main idea the subject and the predicate and things of that nature, basically the main idea, you're taught to look in the first few sentences of the first paragraph. So the main idea here for eponym is one for which or whom something is or is believed to be named. Someone, this is a a, a someone which has things named after him or or people or, or things in general, okay? The word can refer to, for example... To, a, to the usually mythical ancestor or totem ancestor or object that a social group such as a tribe hold to be the origin of his name. Notice here that mythical doesn't mean fake either, not in its totality. In its most familiar use, in its most familiar use, in its most familiar use, eponym denotes a person for whom a place or thing is named. In its most familiar use, like I just stated, eponym denotes a person for whom a place or thing is named. As in describing James Monroe as an eponym of Monrovia, Liberia. Okay? So he's basically telling you that, that James Monroe is an eponymous ancestor. He is an eponym for which there are names and places, uh, 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 names of places and things and people after him. A derivative adjective is eponymous. An eponymous hero of the work of literature is one whose name is the title of the work. Because the work is named after the hero, whether it's real or fake, whether it's mythological or whether it's historical. An eponymous hero 
of a work of literature is one whose name is the title of the work, such as Anne Bronte's Agnes Gray or Charles Dickens' David Copperfield and John Fowles' Daniel Martin. Eponymous Ancestors and ancestors whose name survives as the name of a people or place. This is the Merriam-Webster's definition of eponymous. Of, relating to, or being the person, or being the person, or thing. Please understand that persons and things are real, okay? Of relating to or being the person or thing for whom or which something is named. Of relating to or being an eponym. This has nothing to do with fake genealogy. This is real genealogy. It is no coincidence that eponymous has to do with naming. It comes to us from the Greek adjective, adjective eponymos, which is itself from onima, meaning name. You hear the word nim, name, oponym, nimmos, and anima, your name, anima, has lent its name to a number of English words, including synonymous, pseudonym, and anonymous. Traditionally, an eponymous person or thing, an eponym, might be a mythical character or totem believed to be the source of a clan's name, but today, however, eponymous more specifically refers to such individuals as the front man of Theo's Trio or the owner of Sally's Restaurant. Theo and Sally, respectively, of course. The things that are named for such name providers are also eponymous. For example, we can speak of the eponymous Ed Sullivan show as well as the eponymous Ed Sullivan. Both are real things, documented in history as real things. It was a real show, and Ed Sullivan was a real man, and they both were real. So eponymous ancestor has nothing to do with fake or genealogy. For here, the word eponym, we see that both show and Ed are eponyms. Ed Sullivan show and Ed Sullivan are both eponyms, and they both are real things. It's sad to me how people speak such ill misinformed information to black people. That tells me how much these people respect you as the audience. This tells me that he thinks that you are very, very stupid to where he have to explain to you what these words is. And if he must explain to you what these words is, then he also should go ahead and mislead you because you deserve to be misled, because you should know what these words mean. This is why the Bible says that the liar hates the one who he lies to. The people who the liar lies to, that liar hate them people. As we can look at Bible Hub 26 and 28, you got all of the translations right here. But since King James is the one that you most likely use, uh, King James Bible say, a lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it. 
and a flattering mouth worketh ruins. It's a real big problem when someone says something and you go back and research what they say and the evidence does not reflect what these people are saying. That's called miseducation. That's called misinformation. That's called misleading, and it is called misguidance. It is also called deceptive. Deceptive. This is the Oxford Language Dictionary. Giving an appearance or impression different from the true one. Misleading. Illusory. Elusive. Chris Harris. Now let's watch Chris Harris become deceptive and elusive to us. Misleading as black people. He's really doing a good job at giving you a vision of what it is he's getting ready to present. And within the narrative of the story, he presents this group of people called the Israelites as black. He shows, oh, they came out of Canaan. Canaan is the son of Ham. Ham is the progenitor of the Africans. All right, he goes into what we call eponymous ancestry. Right? Eponymous ancestry is um, a fake genealogy. That's all it is. That's all eponymous ancestry is. People, wake up. Stop letting people lie to you all. This man don't give a fuck about y'all. Anytime a person can sit up there and feed you lies, they don't give a fuck about you. And then address this up as scholarship, that is deceitful. That is illusory. You have to understand what this man is doing, all right? You really have to understand what he's doing. When it says Chris Harris to message to Kyrie Irving, Hebrews to Negroes is trash, comma. Now he want to talk about fake history. What Chris Harris is doing is being showing you what fake history is. He is telling you and giving you fake history. And he is doing this under the elusiveness, under the deception of pseudo-scholarship, fake scholarship. I just showed y'all what this man just did, y'all. And I am going to do this over and over again and show y'all the fake scholarship that Sinetta is promoting out of his hatred for God, the Bible, Christians, Muslims, and Jews, and scholarship and intellect.